This video shows you how to use the U-Factor Calculator program. The U-Factor Calculator window is available in both CHVAC and RHVAC and can also be opened from the Elite Software section of the Start menu. That version of the program saves its data in a file that is independent of those program's project files. The HVAC Tools program also has a U-Factor Calculator window that runs within that program's main window. That version of the window saves its data within the current project file. The version of U-Factor Calculator used for this video is the one that works with CHVAC and RHVAC, but the HVAC Tools version is very similar. A component in the program refers to an entire assembly, such as a wall or a roof. We are currently viewing component number one, which is named first. We want to create a new component that will be a 2x4 frame wall. Click the Component menu. Click Create New. We are now in component number 2. Name this component Frame 2x4 Wall R19 Bat Insulation. The framing percentage specifies how much of the overall wall area the framing members take up including those at the top and bottom of the wall, extra framing around doors and windows, etc. Enter 25%, which is typical for a wall. The interior and exterior air surfaces of a wall contribute to the overall U-factor of the wall. Let's include both the interior and exterior air surfaces, so leave the Include input set to Y. The interior air surface of a residential wall normally has an air type of still air. The exterior air surface air type can be either 7.5 mile per hour wind for cooling or 15 mile per hour for heating. Let's use the higher winter value of 15, which will give a slightly higher U factor for the wall. The emittance for the air surface is used along with all the other inputs to determine the resistance, R value, of the air surface. If none of the other options provided are a good match, then select 0.90 for average building materials. The heat flow direction also has an effect on the air surface's R value. For a wall, the HARIS option should be selected for both interior and exterior since the heat flows across the wall in a horizontal direction. The internal airspace options can be used to define up to two airspaces to account for pockets of air within the wall assembly. Our wall has an air pocket within the cavity that is between the vertical studs, so set the type option to B to specify that it is between the furrings. Enter 2 inches for the width of the airspace. The average temperature within the air cavity is 50 degrees, a typical value in the winter. The temperature difference across space refers to the difference in temperature between the interior side and the exterior side surfaces. A typical value of 10 degrees is fine for our wall. The emit surf 1 and emit surf 2 inputs are for the emittance values of the internal side and external side surfaces that enclose the airspace. Let's again use the average building materials option of 0.90. The heat flow direction option for our internal airspace is of course horizontal, since our component is a wall. Our wall has only one internal airspace so we do not need to use the Space 2 inputs. Select Not Selected from the list. All of the Space 2 inputs will now be ignored. Notice that our two air surfaces and our one internal airspace have been automatically added to the summary list. And the final U-Factor result is constantly kept up to date with our latest input selections. Now let's select some materials for the wall from the list. 
For each material we select, we will need to set the type input to either O, A, or B. Here are the material type options. O, overall, used for any material that covers the entire wall area, such as wall siding. A, at furring, used for materials such as wall framing that make up only a part of the wall area. B, between furring, used for materials that only cover the area of the wall that is not covered by the at furring area. The list has a lot of commonly used building materials, along with some blank rows. Once we select a material by setting its type, we can then edit the material with these inputs if needed. Let's go from the exterior side to the interior side of the wall in defining our materials. The first material is the exterior siding. Scroll down to the first blank item in the list, which is row 134. Select row 134, the first undefined row. Since this material is our external siding, Select O to specify that the siding covers the entire wall area. Now let's change the material description to siding. We happen to know the R value of our siding material, which is R0.81. That value comes from Appendix 12 in the Manual J publication. That means we don't need to enter the width. For resistance, enter our siding's R value of 0.81. Since we have entered the full R value of the siding, we need to set the per inch input to no in order to specify that the resistance we entered is not on a per inch basis. The summary list now includes the siding we just entered. Now let's enter the R6 board insulation into row 135. Since the board insulation covers the entire wall area, select the O option, overall. Enter a description. We know that the board is rated R6, so we do not need to enter the width. Enter 6 for the resistance input and set per inch to N. Now let's enter the one half inch wood sheathing into row 136. The sheathing is of course another overall type of material. The sheathing R value is R0.82, which again comes from Manual J's Appendix 12. So we can skip the width enter the resistance, and set per inch to N. For the 2x4 wood studs and other framing, we will use existing row 132. This time we need to select the A option for at furring. Since we earlier entered 25% for the framing percentage, this material will only take up 25% of the wall's area. The default description for this material is already fine, but let's edit it to make it more specific. The resistance for this material is a per inch value, so this time we do need to enter the proper width, which is 3.5 inches. Our next material is one half inch gypsum board, which is also one of the predefined materials. Select Overall again. For the R19 fiberglass bat insulation, we need to use the next undefined row, which is 137. This material's location type is B for between furrings. Since the framing percentage for the wall is 25, this material will take up 75% of the total wall area. Since we know the R value, we can skip width, enter resistance, and set per inch to N. 
We have finished defining the wall. The overall U-factor box shows that the wall's U-factor is 0.0447. The summary list at the bottom shows all of the things that contributed to the final U-factor result. We are running the standalone version of U-Factor Calculator, so the first two items in the file menu are not available. But we can still copy the result to the clipboard by clicking Copy Result to Clipboard. If we had opened U-Factor Calculator from within RHVAC or CHVAC, we could instead simply click Update Current Input or Update and Exit in order to insert the result into the current U-Factor input in either program. Thanks for watching.